Hey guys, it's Bank for About PC Gamer here. A few weeks ago, I did say I was going to be putting my Kraken G10 bracket onto the reference designer AMD R9290 once I got my um, CPU heatsink replacement. Now that I've got my Corsair H110i back and it's calling my Intel i7-5960X again, I can now start experimenting with this water cooling with an AIO. Um, solution on the AMD R9290. Now I actually did order some um, heat sinks for the memory. You do need 16 in total to deal with um, the AMD R9290 but it doesn't seem like those are going to be showing up anytime soon. So rather than wait I thought I'd just try it out without the um, RAM um, heat sinks and see how I get on. Now that I have the AMD R9290 out of the case, I do need to strip it down. Quite a simple process, I'll go through um, with it now with you guys, but before I do that, I'll show you what cooler I'm using with the NZXC G10 bracket. I'll be using the Corsair H90, 140mm uh, radiator. Um, previously used it on my GTX 1080. Um, I will not be putting it back on my GTX 1080 if you're wondering because um, it's December 2016 and my upgrade will be coming probably in the next two months so the GTX 1080 will be getting sold um, so there's no point of putting back a cooler onto something I'm not going to be keeping for very long while my AMD R9290 is my resident spare card it's something that's always here so I may as well give it a cooling upgrade I do apologize for the dark camera. So I finally got the AMD R9290 reference cooler off this monstrosity that isn't up to the task in my opinion. So what you can see here is the naked PCB. I've gone through the trouble of cooling two of the hottest areas on the card because I don't have enough um, heat sinks to deal with the memory. I decided to prioritize the VRMs. Now one VRM section is in the top um, left hand corner of the card which I put down a thermal pad and a heat sink and the other VRM area it's at the rear of the card I've used five heat sinks, a thermal heat pad and some um, thermal DC just to keep that in place so that should be enough to reduce the temperatures on the heavy load now I've covered all the RAM heat sinks with uh, thermal pads in an attempt just to absorb just a, a little bit of um, extra heat because I don't have the thermal heat sinks. I have actually ordered some but the courier that's meant to bring it to me decided that it, it would take them two weeks for it to get to me so that sucks. That's the last time I get something with free delivery and not check just how long that free delivery will take so that's the cooler removed. I'm just going to put some thermal pads down and mount the Kraken G10 and the H90 um, for those of you who keep asking, yes, I still have my GTX 1080, it's fresh in the box. I just want to play with my R9 290, so no, I haven't got rid of my GTX 1080. It's still here, i just got no need to use it for the moment because I want to play with my AMD R9 290, so that's pretty much that. And I'll show you guys what it looks like once I've fully mounted for NZXT Kraken G10 and for our Corsair H90. So this is the final product, the AMD R9290 mounted with the NZXT Kraken G10 with a Corsair H90. Now you can see this 90mm uh, fan I believe that's called in the VRM area. Um, because the AMD R9290 VRM area gets so hot I've had to do a DIY um, added cooling solution to add um, some thermal pads and some heat sinks as well that should take and um, quite a bit of the heat off of the PCB and also I've also added a number, another um, thermal pad and a heat sink for the VRM second VRM area which is over here so I've done my best with it hopefully this will bring the temperatures down dramatically from the 85 degrees plus I've been experiencing so I'm gonna get it all in the system and see how it goes. Here are the final results of the NZXT Kraken G10. 
mounted onto the AMD R9 290 with the Corsair H90. That's a lot of 90s. So it looks pretty good. There's no drooping of the PCB. It does look real solid. Um, I've opted to just drop the fan in on the floor of the case. That way I can just insert and remove this AMD R90 real easy as I please. So it's not actually mounted but it's in a great position where the airflow can just get sucked outside the case through the ventilation holes on the floor so there's no issue there and it looks pretty good so now what I want to do is test it what I really hope for is the temperatures to be brought to at least 65 degrees and obviously now I've got quiet operation so I'm happy about that so let's just put the card through its paces and see what it can do so with the NZXT Kraken G10 finally installed with the Corsair H90, it's time to actually start testing this card. And the main concern I have here, this is GPU-Z by the way, is the VRM temperatures on this card. Now, the VRMs are quite difficult to call on the AMD R9 290. Believe it or not, they are rated to handle up to 125 degrees Celsius, but obviously that's something I want to avoid. So if I can keep the VRMs under... 100 degrees I'll be happy so let's just hope that the heat sinks I added to both the RM areas will handle the extra load I'm going to put under the card so naturally the card runs at stock at 947 um, megahertz on the core I'm not going to overclock the memory as I said I don't have any adequate cooling for that so I'm just going to leave that at stock no point of taking the risk but I will be doing a little bit of overclocking so I'm going to increase the voltage up to 25 millivolts and I'll take the call from 947 all the way up to 1080 and I'll obviously make sure that the temperature limits at its maximum so that's the overclock I'm going to use and I'm going to do a 15 minute stress test with Unigine Valley at 1080p and you guys will be able to see um, in real time just how this affects the card, it's maximum temperature of the VRM etc. So I'm going to put this up here so you can keep a good eye on the VRMs and I'll load Unigine Valley. So I'm going to let this run for 15 minutes and we'll see just what kind of temperatures we're looking at. So as you can see guys, the R9 290 when overclocked is an extremely hard card to control when it comes to heat. Um, achieved one goal at least, VRMs did both stay under 100 degrees, VRM2 under 70 degrees and VRM1 hitting a maximum of 98 degrees I believe so. And that was under pretty much a torture test so that is pretty good. But a um, bit disappointed that the temperatures weren't a bit better. 66 degrees as a maximum is what, what I've seen within that 15 minute test. So I um, would have liked it to be a bit cooler, under 65 degrees, but you know, you can't have it all. This is a makeshift um, cooling solution after all. But at least I'm not running at 85 plus degrees with a loud cooler at 70%. So um, I've got quiet operation now, and this is. Um, a lot better than a reference cooler so I can't complain too much anyway guys hopefully you found this video interesting and um, I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching